Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, I'm Tash and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and I also put out regular tutorials. So it is Wednesday the 13th of March and I'm recording here in Sydney, Australia. So I have one finished object this week and I'm wearing it and it's not the finished object that I thought I would have. Um, I'll show you that one later in my works in progress, but I finished the camisole number four, which is uh, by my favorite things knitwear. And I use knitting for olive uh, pure silk in the colorway raspberry pink. So I had, I think I was, I hadn't actually attached the straps last week and I still had a bit to go in the body. So I'll stand up and show you first. I need it a little bit longer. I'll show you the back. Okay, now I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, so I knit it to 10 and a half, 10 and a half, let me just check, 10 and a half inches from here down. And the straps, I don't even know how long the straps were actually, I didn't measure them, but I, did, I knit 53 rows, I know that. Now I use slightly small, I'm, I'm playing a little bit with the edges because this is the bit that I don't love so much. It's a little bit kind of flary and folding in there and it's not terrible. I, I guess I just want that to sit flat. That's probably my only complaint. Other than that, I'm really happy. I'm wearing it with a strapless bra, which you can't see. Um, hopefully as I continue to wear it today, um, it won't drop down further. I have had it on a hanger for the last few days. Um, and I actually only just grafted it this morning, but I had it on a hanger with clips and then just um, finished the grafting because it felt like um, I was, you know, it was going to be fine. So it doesn't feel too low here and it doesn't feel too low on the sides. So yes, so a few other things about it. My gauge was a tiny bit bigger. So I knit the extra, whatever the smallest size was, I think it's XS, which is the 28.75 inch size. The gauge is meant to be 25 stitches and I was getting 24. So my width is 30 inches, which is still two inches of negative ease. And I knit it to 10 and a half inches, which was um, just over one and a half balls of the pure silk. So it weighs 80 grams. So not a lot of, um, not a lot of yarn. And yeah, it was actually quite a nice knitting experience. It stalled um, partly because I just wasn't quite sure what to do with the straps and oh, and I know, and it stalled because, not because anything, but I just started doing that test knit for the armor sweater. So this one got put aside. Um, so I think that's another reason why perhaps why test knits aren't great for me because then other knits that I actually want to finish just sit there until I finish the test knit. And then they kind of get a bit, oh, I have to get myself back going in them and I've lost momentum. But I am very happy. Um, it's actually still really hot here today in Sydney and I'm wearing it. Um, I'm just wearing it with shorts actually. Oh, sorry, I was down, nearly tripped over. Um, wearing it with shorts, just some nice blue um, sort of dress shorts and yeah, I'll just wear some sandals um, with it and yeah, I think it's a really nice knit. So it's definitely a casual um, a casual knit but really good for um, warm weather here. Right, so that's my only finished object for the week and I will now do Friend from the Vault. So in this segment I show you something that I knit earlier and today's knit, actually I was going to show a couple of weeks ago and then I realized it needed a wash. Um, and I just kind of, I just dumped it in some warm water and with some wool wash and I didn't even think about it. And I should have thought about it because, um, so it's Neon Beast by Vera Valamaki. You can probably see why I should have thought about the fact that the water was warm. Um, yes, so the pink bled. I'll just show you the shawl anyway. I'm still going to wear it, even though I've kind of got some nice splotching on it. Um, it's uh, Neon Beast by Vera Valamark. You can see it's really, really long. It's a three color shawl. I used Madeleine Tosh fingering um, in, which is like an 80, 10, 10 um, Merino cashmere nylon. And this is farmhouse white. Uh, the pink that bled is a uh, fluoro rose and the blue is Robin's egg. And it was a great, it was a really great um, pattern to knit. I really enjoyed it. I knit it in 2015, so this is um, eight years old. It had been washed before, but I'd washed it in cold water. So that was my, um, that was definitely my mistake. I really needed just cold water so that that dye didn't, um, didn't bleed. You can see it bled even onto, onto there, but oh well. Um, oh, oh gosh. It's such a nice, it's so nice and soft. I'm definitely still gonna wear it. It's got this really lovely pop of color. Um, 
with so if you're wearing something that's sort of mostly white um, and honestly when you've got it all like you know scrunched up like that no one's gonna go oh look I mean somebody might but anyway I just think oh I suppose yeah it's a little bit I might have to be a bit creative in how I in how I style it but honestly I don't know that I'll care that much I mean I do care I'm bummed if I could get it out I would but I'm not going to not wear it so and it is just really lovely and soft so it weighs um, 212 grams um, 80 grams of the blue 34 grams of the pink and 98 gra grams of the farmhouse white so you can definitely get it out of some like left that one main skein and then some leftovers of the others if you have um, and I have all my details on my project page so if that helps I, I do like I try to weigh all my yarn so people especially with um, projects that might be able to use partial balls to get an idea of ah, could I squeak it out um, and the pattern is pretty forgiving so and yeah and it was a really enjoyable knit um, yeah eight years old and it's holding up pretty well I did actually I have worn it quite a lot before I just you know stained it um, I just have no idea I tried I actually have um, done this before with something else and I tried using color catcher stuff to get it out and it just didn't do anything so I think I'm just going to accept that that's if anyone has any suggestions I'm happy to hear them um, yes so that anyway that's my friend from the vault neon beast I am going to talk about my works in progress now um, so I have one new work in progress and that is camisole number nine so I finished um, one camisole and I started another so this is camisole number nine by my favorite things knitwear and I'm using Knitting for Olive yarn again, but this time it is the Cotton Merino and that's the Colorway Bark. So it's, you know, it's quite a nice mid-brown. Um, looks like just almost nothing at the moment. So I'm knitting the extra, extra small, but you're meant to have six stitches for the straps and I cast on eight. I had a read of Karen um, Casuarina Girl's project notes. And so just hopefully that will help a little bit with bra straps. I'm using one needle size smaller. I'm using a 2.75 millimeter needle. So I know with this yarn, I knit a pie camisole in a blue color out of this yarn. And I used a 2.5 millimeter needle and my gauge after wearing it ended up about 31 stitches over four inches. The gauge for this pattern is meant to be 30. So I'm hopeful with a 2.75, I should be close to that. So I did cast on two extra stitches for the straps and I didn't deduct any anywhere else. So at the moment this is four stitches um, and I'm just working down the front at the moment they've still got a lot more increasing for the armholes and then it's got some like treatment around the armhole so it will be it will be wider it just reminds me of camisole number five which looked like a little you know like a piece of nothing <laughs> um, but yes it will it's getting there um, I mean I've only just started it but yeah I'm enjoying it. it's fairly simple knit and I just love working with this yarn it's really lovely soft the 30% um, merino that's in here it's 70% cotton 30% merino it's just enough for the elasticity and for the ease of knitting um, but it's still like I wear that pie camisole quite a lot I really like it and I really like knitting with the yarn so um, I don't think there's anything else I want to say except um, oh yeah it's meant to the XXS is um, is meant to be it's the 27 and a quarter inch size it's meant to have about five to six inches of negative ease so that would be about five inches of negative ease um, I have the four extra stitches which will be four extra on the front and the back what I could do if I feel like it doesn't look like it now but if I feel like it's getting a bit big um, I could just cast on less stitches under the arms that's my usual um, you know it just looks ridiculously small at the moment but it will get bigger um, and yes and there's lots of other stuff on the side as well eventually so that's my only new work in progress um, my other works in progress I've got early bloomer by Heidi Kiermaier and I'm using um, Durirum Natura in um, Penelope uh, Durum Natura Penelope in the colorway Orgeet and then I have some um, let me just grab them I've got some Madeleine Tosh DK twist um, yarns in this pink gradient color and I've got I had eight but I'm just using six of them and somebody suggested I can't remember who I'll put it down who it was because it was a good suggestion um, to alternate instead of just doing gradient all the way like from darkest to lightest to alternate like maybe do a dark section then a light then a dark then a light and I'll also use this dark for the neckline. So it looks a little bit crazy at the moment because it is top down and you might think, well, how can that possibly be top down? Look how big 
is that meant to be your neck? So there's a provisional, I'm just gonna make sure these stitches aren't gonna come flying off. Um, normally I try to get things to a point where I can try them on, but this one, I just thought, you know what, it's just too, um, I'm not gonna do it next, next week, I reckon. I'll do it next week. Um, so the neckline, this is a provisional cast on, and then um, you come back and you unzip it and you do the short rows for the back and then the um, ribbing, and then it's got a contrast trim, which I'll use this really dark one, um, which was the same as this one here. I'll use the dark one for the trim, and there's a trim here and on the sleeves and on the bottom. This makes me really nervous. After this bleed, um, I am really nervous about this. So I am going to only, I'll just be very careful when I block this of only using really cold water and not leaving it. Like I won't be leaving it to soak. I'll just like squish the water in and out and then, and when I wash it, probably same thing. I'll do use cold water. Um, wool wash can sometimes make things bleed. So I might have to do like a little, like do a little swatch or something in a patch test because some might be better than others. Um, anyway, so it's coming down the, um, I've, what have I done? I've done this six sections. So I've done one, two, three, and I'm on the fourth one now. It's actually because it's DK weight yarn, it's going pretty quickly. Um, I think each row is only about seven seven minutes, which is not very long. I do find I can't watch podcasts or TV or anything when I'm doing fair on knitting. Like my brain is fully in two, one, 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 two, five, two, one, 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 two, five, or whatever the, whatever the, sorry if you were counting, um, whatever the repeat is, I just talk to myself as, you know, even if it's just in my head. Um, but if I tried to watch a show or even a podcast, I, I make a mistake almost straight away. So it's like that for me with the first row of ribbing. Just the first row, if I try to do something else when I'm just setting up the first row of ribbing, I almost certainly will make a mistake. I'll have two knits somewhere and then a pearl or whatever, and then I have to rip the whole thing back. Anyway, I think this is coming along well. I can't say, I, I like working with this yarn. I don't love it. It's soft, it's squishy. It's almost too springy. It feels like spongy almost. It's a bit, it's a bit strange. Um, yeah, so this is 90% wool, 10% silk um i just don't think it's actually the best for color work mm. i'm not gonna undo it i'm i'm committed to it i bought it for this project i think it will make a perfectly fine top i think i'll be happy with it in the end but just as i'm knitting it i'm like yeah i mean i don't do a lot of knitting um feral knitting with dk not a lot um a little i've done a little like ingles i've made that a few times and that's but i guess that's with us i have used a sport weight and a uh a mohair held with it and that definitely helps soften all the colors like the color transitions and stuff um but yeah i think it'll be fine yeah like, and i don't think it's going to take very long so and i'm just i am curious to see i'm weighing like all of the yarn that i'm um using so i'm working out how much each little section takes because i think it'd be quite sweet for leftovers i mean it is leftovers anyway but for future projects so yep yeah, that's early bloomer by heidi kumar uh, anything else? Oh, I am making the extra small size, which is 31 inches, but I'm using larger needles. I'm using four millimeter needles instead of 3.5. I think my gauge is going to be about 21 stitches. So hopefully it will end up around 33 to 34 inches, which would be one to two inches of positive ease, which is kind of what I'm going for. Just a little bit of positive ease. Um, oh, that was the other thing I was going to do though. I think, um, maybe even before I finish the color work, I might do a row and get it all onto a long needle and then um, pick up the neckline stitches and just make sure, because that that is, to be honest, that is scaring me a little. I'm gonna lose some stitches here. That is scaring me a little bit, how big that is. Um, I'm sure it will be fine, but I'm unsure enough that I will take it off and take it off the, the provisional cast on, do the neckline, make sure I'm 100% happy with it, and then continue down the body. And I would definitely do that no matter what before slip, um, splitting for the sleeves. Like that's the whole benefit of a top down sweater is trying it on. I mean, there's really no ability to try this on in any sensible way at the moment until I've done that neckline. Like it won't give me any information in terms of yoke depth or anything. Um, yes, so I'll do the neckline, finish the yoke. I think then I will block it on the needles very carefully in cold water and then we'll see how we go. Um, and I don't think this is gonna take me very long, even though I'm super busy at work. Um, you know, like, I think I've got uh, 
five more rows of this motif at seven minutes a row I'll be finished this ferrule section in 35 minutes of knitting so yeah it's going pretty quickly um, and I did put out a video um, on how I knit holding um, one color the, this color in my right hand and whatever the contrast is in my left but and I made a suggestion in that video if you haven't watched it that if you are thinking about doing ferrule you don't have to hold one yarn in each hand you could definitely hold them both in the right hand but you obviously have to drop and then you have to drop the yarn and then you have potential of the balls getting tangled um, and if you do decide to do color work holding a yarn in each hand I recommend doing a whole project like a stockinette beanie in um, and do the whole thing as hard as it will feel the whole thing holding the yarn in your sort of non-dominant knitting style just to build up the mess muscle memory and get that made such a difference because I tried doing it before um, and then I thought you know what I really need to build up my continental skills and just that one just one beanie round and round and round and round I got something at the end of it also I noticed my gauge was much looser so which is fine for color work actually to be honest because that way I don't I don't ever go sometimes patterns tell you to go up a needle size I don't go up a needle size I don't need to I think if you need to great but I don't need to I'm just loose enough with the left hand and, and I'm really conscious of my floats that I don't um, I don't need to go up a needle size which is nice right so that's um, work in progress number two if I go to work in progress number three which I thought was going to be finished um, I almost finished it actually last night I was knitting away on it and then I so this is tell you about it it's the Stockholm slipover by Petite Knit I am using Rowan um, felted tweed uh, DK in the colorway scree and this is knitting for olive um, soft silk mohair in the colorway soft blue and it's knitting up really nicely there's tweedy flex but not a crazy amount and I have to say when I did the neckline and the armholes I remembered to do the ribbing inside out because I find just standard one side one one I think Karen was the person who suggested this um, standard one by one ribbing tends to look if you're doing it in the round looks a little bit nicer on the side on the inside on the reverse side and on the opposite side to the way you're knitting in the round so for these I picked up the stitches and then I immediately went backwards so I knit I knit um, these like um, where the outside was facing out the this was facing out so I knit it inside out to what the way you normally would but I just wasn't thinking when I picked I didn't have to pick up the stitches but when I started switch to ribbing on the bottom I just didn't think about it and I didn't do it inside out so you can see that's it on the right side and that's the inside and see how it does look it does look nicer um, and I think even with blocking it still would look nicer so I just didn't feel it's only six rows right it's not a lot but it is um, with this with mohair um, but yeah I am gonna rip it out and I just I find sometimes if I know I'm gonna do that or I'm umming and ahhing I thought no I need to stop knitting now because I might just go oh, I don't care and keep knitting and then later go oh, actually I do care um, so I thought no I'll just stop knit on something else that's why it's nice to have a few different projects on the go and then I'll have a think about it so I've decided I am going to rip it out and I've been meaning to do a tutorial on ripping out safely where you actually pull the needles out and unwind it obviously I've got two strands of yarn so there's even more to deal with but it's I've done it before it's not that big a deal I'm not even gonna oh, I don't know sometimes I wind it separately but for six rows I might just wind it together um, I think I will I'll just wind it together and then I'll show how I um, get the need get it back on the needles and start knitting again so I tend to knit it um, undo it to one row before um, before I like I will leave one row of ribbing on there as I'm like I'll pull the needles out row um, knit back rip back until I've got one row left and then as I'm ripping out that last row I one stitch at a time put it on the needles um, as I'm pulling out the yarn so I'll show you how I do that um, might find that helpful and I've been meaning to do that anyway so I thought oh, another re good reason that I didn't do it um, in the middle of like late late last night so yes so that is the Stockholm sweater it is almost done um, I have to say it's been really nice um, 
the rest of the knitting on it and trying it on without bits everywhere and all of the rest of the finishing done and knowing when I've done the bottom oh and I, I did do a tubular cast uh, sorry tubular bind off in all of these um, sections and I'll do the same here I think um, I do I'll do two setup rows so just the one of the knits and one of the pearls like knit slip knit slip etc then pearl slip pearl slip so just those two rows and then a tubular bind off uh, was there anything else I was going to say? So I'm knitting, um, this is a 19 stitch gauge, so it's on 4.5 millimeter needles. So it went really quickly. It just got parked while I did the armor sweater as a test knit. I'm knitting the size 35.75 inches. Um, and this is turning out 35 inches. So it's pretty much on gauge. Uh, and down the body, it measured, I think it got to, um, or it was about to, once it got all the way, it was going to be 11 and a half inches from the top of that ribbing to the bottom for me. And um, I think it will look really nice. I tried it on last week over a white blouse. I think this will be my finished object for next week and I'll have it over a white blouse and styled and everything how I would um, how I would wear it. So that's um, three garments. So I've got the uh, camisole, um, the early bloomer, which is a short sleeve top and this vest and I'll slip over or whatever. Um, two more works in progress. The um, uh, half and half wrap, so drop my little swatch, half and half wrap by Pearl Soho and it's a free pattern. I'm using um, Pearl Soho linen quill in the colorway um, bird's egg blue and red poppy and that's my little swatch of the two of them together. Um, I really like that. I like that kind of icy blue with the um, orangey red and I think that the icy blue is probably the one that I'll use like as the more the one you, you'll see the little orange popping out and so I started with the blue I'm using the recommended needle size which is 3.25 millimeter and what did I do this week um, that's my marker from where I um, how much how many ridges I did uh, I did 26 ridges and I've got 32 grams left of the second ball and um, I'm about halfway on the stitches because every every ridge you consume one more like you do a short row one stitch further in so that is um 130 stitches there and then another 130 stitches there but because the rows are getting shorter i'm well over half well over halfway into the blue um but even when i finish the blue i'm only halfway through the project because then i've got to pick it up and do the Orange. So I guess that means I'm certainly more than a quarter of the way, but you know, I'm not I'm not in a rush on this It'll get done when it gets done and I'm I'm really enjoying the the fabric the knitting. It's just really really lovely It's perfect vanilla knitting. I am slipping the first stitch knit wise and I'm doing wrap and turn short rows Which is what you see in that um, in that swatch there. I'll just show you And I think that looks nice. So um, the the edging's a bit different on here. I did a different edging on there. This is I'll show you the edging. This is what it looks like with um, slipping the first stitch knit wise. If you slip it knit wise, you still keep the ridges, which is the look I wanted. So yes, and it will take me forever. I could actually see. I, I won't talk about making a new one, but I could see myself. I just love having this on the needles. I could see myself making multiples of these because it doesn't feel like oh, when's this going to end? I love it. Uh, right, and my last, my last work in progress is the Skimmer Socks by Sheila Toy Stromberg. I have finished, um, uh, I'm using Dingo Dye Works Ridgy Didge in this icy blue colorway. I finished the first sock. This is for my mum. So this one weigh, uh, weighs 16 grams. Mum tried it on and she said, I wasn't there when she tried it on. Um, my son took it over to her place and she tried it on and um, she said, she felt this heel flap was a bit short for her. So she said, finish, like finish the other, like don't undo this one, do another one. Like they don't take very long. Um, I'll do another one exactly the same. And then I'll actually get to, and I'll block it and I might try and stretch it out a little bit. Um, see how it fits. So I actually did with this one, I did the heel, um, the, what do you call it? The short rows at the back to make that little um, tab a little bit higher. I haven't done it in my other ones, but I thought I had plenty of yarn, so I thought I'll do it for this one and see if mum likes it. And I'm glad I did, because if she feels it's short here anyway, 
Good thing I've got an extra four rows there. So, but what I might do, um, if it really does seem too short and it's slipping down in her shoes, um, either I need to make it a little bit longer or I'll make that heel flap a little bit um, taller. I don't actually know how to do that. So I'll have to, I'll have to have a think about that because you sort of, I don't know. I need to think about that actually because you're sort of consuming these stitches on the side as you do it. So it's not just a straight up, hmm. Yep, yeah. uh, figuring out how to amend that will take a little bit of thought um, if that's what needs doing. So, but I will block it and see if it makes a difference and I can figure it out. I can, I'll, but it, it's not just a simple matter of knit a few more rows. I'll have to think a little bit about the stitch count. Right, so that's, um, oh, and the second one is actually on, on the needles. I um, went for a walk this morning and did the, um, did the toe uh, of the second one. Right, so that's it for my works in progress. So my next segment is acquisitions and my only acquisition this week is cami number nine. So I bought that from my favorite things knitwear because um, I didn't already own it. So I bought that and cast it on, but that's my only purchase, my only acquisition. My next segment is what has caught my eye. Um, one thing that um, has caught my eye is actually a knitting cruise. So a Danube knitting cruise. My yarn store skein sisters um, have one coming up, I think at the end of this year, I think it's the Rhine, um, a Rhine knitting cruise. This one's on the Danube and it's, um, it's in November, like the end of November. And it was possible for me, but um, I think just not, not perfect and look it doesn't have to be perfect but it wasn't cheap and anyway I chatted with Beck about it and we both like we're like oh could this be the one because we are going to do some kind of knitting retreat together like a you know an overseas one but it might be um might be Ryan Beck first for the two of us I'm not sure we need to figure it out she's got two young kids um and has to figure out you know timing and everything there as well but I will tell you about it so this is the Danube um, Christmas market knit retreat and it's um the end of November it's from Nuremberg Germany to Budapest Hungary and yeah I'd love to go um it's for a week but yeah it's not cheap um well, I mean they're not going to be cheap right they that's just what they are they're, they're it's a special thing you don't do it every every other day um uh, yeah, but it's it's certainly got Beck and me talking about what what would we want in a knitting retreat, and um, we are going to go to the one just down um, in Stanwell Tops in August, but uh, which is great, and I'm really looking forward to that one. But we are talking like a big special one as well that we're sort of thinking about. So maybe maybe it will be Ryan Beck for us. Um, anyway, but this particular um, Danube Knitting Cruise has um, Skein Sisters and another yarn store is. Um, uh, the name of the yarn store that's putting it on sorry I should know this um uh yeah es Espas Trico um is organizing that with Skane Sisters and the two sort of guest speakers are Patty Lyons and Mary Jane Mucklestone and then I think they're also going to have some crochet knitting class crochet knitting some crochet classes as well um right so that has definitely caught my eye but I think maybe not for me but it, I definitely it's got me thinking about retreats and yeah, if it's for you, great. Uh, the other thing that has caught my eye is a really beautiful pattern called Astery by Natasha Hornby. I saw it on Bobby from Knitter's Niche and it just looked really, really beautiful. I loved the the um, the motif and the way, um, I don't know if it was slip stitches or cables or whatever, but it just looked really, really beautiful. So that definitely caught my eye. I haven't followed up anything more about the pattern with what yarn I'd use or anything, but I just looked at it and went, oh, have I put it in my favorites? If I haven't, I'm going to. Um, another thing that caught my eye um, was actually a podcaster, and another Australian podcaster, and her name's Nadine, and her um, podcast is called Your Knitting Bestie, which is really cute. She is in Brisbane, Australia, which is a really, I used to live in Brisbane, and I grew up in Queensland, which is the state um, Brisbane's the capital of. I grew up there, it's really hot. Um, so not super easy for wearing knitwear, but I definitely knit when I was in Brisbane. I did a lot of knitting there. So anyway, she's from Brisbane and the podcast that I saw her do was one called um, 10 Sophie Scarf Alternatives. And I haven't even watched the end of it, but I watched sort of a fair bit of it. And she seems really, really nice, really nice style. And it was an interesting podcast. So that caught my eye. Uh, and the other thing that has caught my eye, I just saw um, Those Twins Who Knit put out a podcast this morning. I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I watched like the first 10 minutes. And Rachel was wearing um, something called the Nord Pullover by, um, oh, I did look it up and then I 
forgot to, where did I put it? Um, what's the name? Han Hannah Rimmer, I think. Hannah Rimmen, Hannah Rimmen. And, um, but when I went to, cause I didn't click from the link from YouTube. So I just looked it up on Ravelry, Nord. Nord pullover, it didn't turn up. I'm like, that's weird. And I was like, did I spell it right? N-O-R-D. And then I went to the YouTube and clicked, um, the YouTube, went onto those twins who knit their YouTube thing and clicked from there. And I saw it's capital N space, capital O space, capital R space, capital D. Like, I don't know, I've mentioned this before. I don't understand. Yes, I know it like maybe draws your eye to it, but I'm like, I can't search that up. Like if I search up Nord, like N-O-I-D with no spaces, you don't find it. Anyway, I don't understand. I'm sure like clearly I must be in the minority. Everybody, not everybody, a lot of people do it. There's obviously a reason for it, but I just, it's a bit of a pet peeve. I have to say, I told, I used that expression in one of my classes, pet peeve. And one of my students said, do you have a pet called Peeve? No, I don't have a pet called Peeve. I thought they were joking. Anyway, I just assumed everybody knows that expression. If you, you have a pet Peeve, I guess it's not bad enough to be a Peeve, but I don't understand it. Anyway, so um, the Nord pullover, despite having a bit of a pet Peeve around the way the name is, um, it looks beautiful and it looks gorgeous on Rachel, but everything looks gorgeous on those girls. But um, Yes, I did definitely call my eye and that's with like a f two colors, a fingering weight and a mohair held together. So really pretty. Again, I haven't looked up yarn for it, but it just looked really nice. And I only just saw it this morning. Right, so that's it for what has caught my eye. Um, my next segment is my plans. Now, um, I, do plan, I do have plans. It's just which one first. So that Stockholm slipover is gonna be finished soon. I don't think this is going to take very long. So I like, even if I'm not starting it, I want to be like, what's next on the needles? So I've got three choices. Um, the uh, Storm Sweater by um, Petite Knit in Pier Gint in the colorway Ash Melange. Or um, the Clay Sweater by Ozetta in this Loch Lamond. I have not used either of those yarns yet. So keen to try those or Snow Wonder, which I've wanted to make for forever and I already have the pattern in this um, Dury Rum Natura Juliette in the colorway CL. I have used that already because I made the Manhattan hat out of that. Um, so I'm just not sure which one it will just be. The, the th only thing slowing me down on this one is I need to do bobbles. So, and I don't, I can't remember the last time I did a bobble. It's probably been a decade since I've done a bobble. So I'd, I would do, um, I need to do a swatch for that. So if, depending on when I feel like casting on, if I feel I have it in me to do a swatch with bobbles, um, then it might be Snow Wonder. I'm not sure, but it's one of those for sure, I think. Uh, right, so that's my plans. And so I'm just gonna do a little bit on personal stuff. There's not a lot. Um, but if you're leaving me now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week and there will be a tutorial um, in the middle of the week when I rip this out, at least a few rows on that. Um, other than that, I'll be back next week with a tu uh, knitting tutorial, no, with a regular podcast um, and now personal stuff, which will be pretty brief because I'm in uh, week seven at school out of an 11 week term. I'm a maths teacher uh, and it's so busy. Um, I just, all I'm doing is work and a bit of knitting um, where I can squeeze it in. And uh, I finished that exam that I was writing and it all got through and is um, good. The kids will do it next week. Of course, I'll have the marking for that once they do it, but um, but the exam is written, which I'm really happy about. And it's just all, yeah, it's all work at the moment. Um, I'm looking forward to the Easter weekend, but I actually have some work to do on that weekend. So such a, anyway, I'm looking forward to the full holidays in four and a half weeks. Coming up, um, I'm teaching at Skane Sisters, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, so the 23rd of March. So that's a full day of teaching there and also the 6th of April. Um, so yeah, that's that's coming up. And also my son, Zach, is having a small surgery, not, not tomorrow, but the next Thursday. So I'll, I will take a couple of days off work to be home with him. It's nothing major, just a little something. And, um, but that is coming up. So that's kind of on my mind as well. Uh, and I think, in a few weeks time, I'm going to see live with my husband on the, I think it's the 10th of April. So I've got a few things coming up, a few nice things to look forward to. 
well, not my son's surgery, but going to see live and the holidays and everything. Um, and even though work is busy, I mean, I love my job. I love teaching, but it just it's getting to the point where it's actually a little bit too much at the moment. So yeah, I'm, I, it's actually probably the experienced teacher thing, just some admin stuff that I have to do that's pushing me over the edge a bit. So I'll be really happy when that's finished. That's what I think I'm going to try and do in that Easter weekend. I mean, I go to church, obviously, it's like that's my faith and um, that's a big time for my faith, the, um, that Easter weekend. But uh, aside from aside from that, it will just be trying to get that experienced teacher thing finished. Right, I think that's it. I have um, really nothing else much to share. I think I've shared enough. So um, thanks so much for watching. Um, and I'd really love it if you did the whole like and subscribe thing if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week. Thanks.